Welcome back to the Sports Mall in Salt Lake City, everybody. I'm Jim Turner. We've got the men's championship coming up in just a moment. And with us for his expert analysis is Jim Heiser. Jim, a newcomer to today's finals, and that's Javad Agalu. What can you tell us about him? Well, Javad's 19 years old. He's from Cor Corpus Christi, Texas. Going into this tournament, he really, I didn't think, had a chance of winning it at all. But he's been really mentally tough. He upset the number one seed and the number four seed. And I asked him a little bit earlier what his strategy is going to be against Jason Menino in the finals. Well, I know he's really quick and he plays up front, so I'm going to use a, a lot of passes. I'm just going to try to make him rush his shots. Just see if he'll start skipping the ball, and uh, I'm just going to try to play my game. Well, Jason Menino is the number three seed. He's here in the final, and I've got to tell you before we set this up, he said, this is going to be a short game. I'm winning it. Let's talk about Jason. Jason's a scrapper. This is where Jason exceeds. He loves the TV, he loves the lights, he loves the people. He's a showman. Uh, I talked to Jason earlier on about how, what he's going to do against uh, Javad. A lot of Z serves and uh, a lot of control. He's going to try to control center court because he knows that's where I like to play. And uh, I'm going to try to obviously establish my position and uh, beat him as firmly as possible. Well, the young men's championship game is coming up against a, a newcomer to the front, a very cocky, confident player. You're going to enjoy it. Lynn Adams is going to bring us, be bringing us some good information from the sidelines. And we're going to be back in Salt Lake City with you at the Sports Mall with the men's junior national championships. What a great shot of the uh, new drink that's out, Powerade, of course, a subsidiary of uh, Coca-Cola Foods, and a tremendous shot of the Olympic rings, the sponsors of the Olympics, and we've already seen a, a lot of great things that uh, are going to come for us in the Olympics. We're ready now with the men's championship finals with Javad Agalu with the serve, serving against Jason Menino, and of course, joining me for this match is Jim Heiser. And Jim, we mentioned earlier in the open the confidence of Jason Menino. He, he, I mean, he says this is going to be early, over early. I'm going for it. You know, I, I, I like that attitude on, on athletes. I don't care what age they are. I like that attitude. But can it play against him that he might overlook this newcomer to the uh, finals in Agalu? I don't think he'll overlook him, but Jason likes a fast-paced game. Can he adjust to television? Can he adjust to the slow pace of television between the replays and stuff? I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. Take a look at this shot. Take a look at that. Oh. oh, that's a great shot. Right off that side wall. Hold it. That's not that an easy shot either. That is not an easy shot. And there's a case there of nerves. You've got to wait for the times. referee to give the, uh, the score before you can serve. Well, both of these kids zero, have never zero, played zero. on television before, so you have to make a little adjustment here. You have to slow your game down a little bit. Short. Short. Second serve. It's important to, for Javad to get off to a quick start. Side out. I'll tell you one thing, if I'm Javad, that's the second time now that Jason's come zero, up on that, sir, uh, that broken line, the encroachment line. I, Short, if I'm going to lob serve, Short. I'd put him closer to the back than I would Short. allow him to come up to splat it. Might uh, wonder second why zero. the referee, Tom Neal, is having to say short two and three times. The players are in a fully enclosed room with a little bit of little microphone in there and sometimes with the echoing of the ball that's ringing through their ears they can't hear the referee's initial call well jason menino plays very far up in the court he mm -hmm. plays real quick he's very quick hands he has very quick feet he uses that athletic ability to compensate for his court position so you'll see him play way up in the surface area and it, i might add this it's a double final for jason menino today he and his doubles partner sudzi manchik are in the doubles in that championship game. So he's got a chance to pull off the old double-double today. Don't know if he will, but he's certainly got the chance. Well, it's really a, an astounding accomplishment because he should be playing in the 16th. He, he's a 16-year-old person here. He should be playing in the 16th, but he says, hey, I'm going to gamble. I'm going to go for the 18th. i got nothing to lose. There's that confidence, and I like it, and I see nothing wrong with it at all. <laughs> Skip that. Oh, he's not too happy with that. That is a clear kill shot for him. He's talking to the ball as he's getting ready to hit it. And he oh, 
He has a slap shot, a slap shot type of a swing, doesn't he? Everything is kind of a turkey jerky it's, slap. It's off a the wall. very quick wrist type uh -huh. of a swing. Doesn't get the racket back very far at all. Just right from the wrist. But he's quick, real quick. Two serve zero. An observation from you. We are at a little bit of an altitude here at Salt Lake. Will that help his power hitting game, or will it keep it Second up and, and allow uh, Javada Agalu to come back and get a return? Well, that was a footfall on that particular one. The referee called a footfall. Let's see if we can see Look it on the overhead, overhead camera. Ooh, that really is not a footfall. Well, well it's difficult because uh, where the referee is, he's here in the serve. back. The whole foot has to be over, and as you can see in that replay, part of the foot was still making contact with the line. Point. I think Javad is a little bit nervous. He seems to be pressing a little bit here early in the first game. Well, Jim, when, when it's the first time on television, your first time in the Junior Finals Championships, it's natural to be nervous. Short. Second serve. <laughs> and Jason, he loves it. <laughs> this is his form for competition. He just loves the people, loves the lights. Jason, oh, turn the cameras on. This. <laughs> Are you kidding? Between him and Sudsy, you'd think they were 35-year-old professional athletes the way they act, and they're just kids, and, they, and kids that I really like. Well, Jason and Sudsy have won the gold medal in every doubles division that they've competed in, 10, 12, 14, and 16. Oh, I'd appeal that one. I'd appeal that one, Javon. He is going to. Javon is appealing Jason's foot fault. I did not see one. Call stands, there will be a charged appeal. Mm. I, I would have appealed the, uh, the skip, not the football. Five, well, Javad six, yesterday appealed two foot faults at very, very critical Short. times in the match when he was playing James Wilcock. Mm -hmm. Short. 14, Second 13, serve. James Wilcock won the game. Javad appealed a foot fault, got it, came back and won. Strangest ending of any game I've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. There's that glass. Yeah. Just enough time for Jason not to be able to adjust. Good opportunity to check it out, Jim. Well, Javai gets that ball, hits it right into the side glass. Jason just lost it for a second. That's all it took. Zero serves five. Actually, the glass is a lot better today than it has been. They've got some lights that they've put outside the glass, and you can see the ball a lot better. Side out. That's a great return by Javad, though, having to take the circus shot from nice, his guys. back. All right, we're in the early stages of the men's juniors championship. There's that circus shot. Look at that. It's only shot he's got. It works out for him. We'll take a short break. We'll be back at the sports mall right here in Salt Lake City. Eight nothing. Javai better take a time out here yeah. quick. Yeah. And of course, Jason being the uh, politician that he is, Short. was uh, told that he was not going to wear his baseball hat for Second this final. Serve. So he looks rather <laughs> spiffy. I think he cleans up rather well. Look at him. He's a pretty good kid. Well, Jason takes credit for introducing baseball hats to racquetball. He was the first one to wear a baseball hat during a racquetball game. He didn't like it when he was told he couldn't wear the hat during the final. Time out. Time out. <laughs> That's your first, you have 30 seconds. All right, there's an outstanding call on the part of Javad, at least for a, uh, for a timeout, and trying to, to gather himself. We've got <laughs> Sudzi Manchik doing a little uh, joking and laughing to, with his uh, doubles partner and his great friend. You know, these guys want to, someday down the road, they want to go into the sports business together. <laughs> Would you buy a racket for me, one of those two guys? <laughs> <laughs> Jim Turner and Jim Heiser with you. Lynn Adams is at courtside. Lynn, who have you got? Well, I don't have anyone with me right now. Sedzi was over talking to Jason, but one of the things that they were talking about was uh, Jason is not a deep court player. He likes to stay in the front, and that was something that uh, Javad was very aware of, but is not playing. He's uh, giving him lots of stuff in the front, front part of the court, which is Jason's Zero serves eight. forte. So I think that's that's his main key of trying to change things is keeping Jason in the back instead of up front. <laughs> there you go. That is a sweet little move too. <laughs> Sudsy, excuse me, not Sudsy. Jason kind of mad at him. So look at that little touch. Great touch. Well, at this altitude, it's almost as valuable to you just to touch the ball One in the front court eight. because the player's going to be playing deep. Short. 
Second serve. You have the opinion sometimes in watching the variety of games that are here, whether it's eight-year-old boys and girls points. or the 16 or the 18 year old but they feel a sudden power. It's a false power because it's the altitude and how much it, it takes them out of a, of a strategic type of game. This is an interesting time for Jason because J both Jason and Sudsy have Side a tendency out. sometimes to try to do too much with the ball, try to be too much of a showman. And they make some unforced errors. We'll see if Jason does that or he sticks Eight to his game. Two. You know, great credit to uh, Javad Agalu receiving Jason's football, serve right hold here. It, we, hold uh, it. Hear a, a, a footfall foot. on the part of uh, Tom Neal referee. Serve. Let's see if this one is, because we didn't feel it was right the first time. Boy, another one awful close. Well, that one, the whole foot was over. Yeah. That was a good call by Tom. But you know, uh, to my point, what an Side outstanding out. tournament uh, Agalu has had. He's had to beat the top seed. He's Two gone to the tiebreakers. He deserves to be here. He sure certainly does. Yeah. I mean, to beat Jason Menino right off the bat, Side or to beat uh, Sudzi Manchek right off the bat, I mean, that was the biggest upset I've seen in a long time in Junior Akabo. Eight serves two. Eight serves two. Yes! Ace. Ace serve. I, I agree with Javad's appealing the call. Go. Both oh, line judges agree. Oh, boy. I think, I think second he, charge appeal. Take a look at this. I think he made the right choice in trying to appeal it. If we're going to be able to see that. Oh, oh boy. That was close. It was hard to tell. It looked like it was a good serve. Not it was easy hard being to tell. a referee when that ball's going 100 miles away. Nine <laughs> serves two. Not, not very easy. Difficult job. Hold it. Short. Late call by the referee, but it was a short serve. Second serve. Jason has 11 kills, and uh, Yavad has four. That's Jason's game, though. Jason doesn't hold anything back. He goes Simple. for bottom Slide board out. every time. Two right. serves nine. Javada Agalu has got to get back into this game, and rather quickly. Great Fight shot. Out. I don't know. You know, I like Javad's uh, switch in philosophy when he went to that high lob serve that Jason's forehand. He had a setup. Since that one serve, he hasn't gone back to it. Side out. We'll see if he sticks with the power game or tries to eat it up, ease it up a bit. Two serves nine. Wow, what a, great, what a great play. Prone to the floor, comes up to pinch roll out. Phenomenal. Cut off the short serve. He had the full dive. Look at that. Roll out. Fantastic. The overhead shot. Look at that really dive. He covered it. 10 feet on that one dive. That's nine great. serves Tremendous. two. Nine two. Once again, as we set the storyline for this match, this championship, Jason said, Point. Jim, it's going to be a quick one. I'm going to get it over with. I love the confidence. We'll see if it, in fact, comes through. And as it Ten is right now, 10-2, he's right. Well, everything's in Jason's favor right now. The pace is fast. He likes the pace. His shots, shots are falling in. He's getting that pinch in. Broken ball. Come back, hit it a couple times. Both of them will see if it feels right to him. Maybe we can go to Lynn sometime around along the road here and, and see what she thinks about J Javad's philosophy of, of hitting a hard-paced game against Jason. Well, Lynn, what do you think? Well, Players I think ready? a good person to answer that would be Sudzi. Sudzi, what do you think about Javad's uh, Ten, sir, strategy two. to hit a hard-paced game against Jason? A hard-paced game? Jason handles it pretty well. He plays me a lot. And, you know, Side goes out. either way when we play, so we'll have to see. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was agreeing with you, Jim, that that high lob to Jason's forehand looks like it could be a Jim winner, but he has 10. not gone back to it to see if it would work or not. That's too bad. Side out. There's another serve right into Jason's kill zone, right below the waist. Ten serves two. Of course, Lynn Adams sitting next to and talking with Sudzi Manchik, part of that juniors team that you took to Amsterdam last year. Uh, last week. Last we went week. To Amsterdam. Last week? Yeah, the week before the, this tournament. Point. Wow. I'm surprised there's no jet lag on some of these kids. Well, maybe like uh, Alcova was suffering a little two. bit last match. She said she was tired, and I think I agree with Lynn. I think a lot of that had to do with just returning from Amsterdam. Skip ball. Point. Unforced error by Javad. He has to be. 12 just try to get the ball in the two. play now. Keep the ball in play. 
Jim, are you happy with uh, the setup for the juniors coaches? You've named uh, Jerry Halisher as the head coach. You have Hart Johnson as one of his assistants, as well as Doc Fischel. Uh, that sounds like a powerful, outstanding coaching group to me. Well, you know, it's, it's very important Two, to make sir, sure that these well. kids get the right instruction at this particular age. And I think we have Skin the best ball. crew of coaches Twice. that we've had in a long time. An unforced error by Jason. Three, sir, he can 12. afford to gamble a couple times right here. Side out. Well, certainly hope you're enjoying the exclusive coverage uh, brought to you by Prime Network. And happy to have Ectalon and the AARA again with us as usual and brought to you by Penn. And I want to thank uh, all the contributions by Ectalon and Penn for always being with us on these televised events. Shot was good. Javada peels that shot. It was very close. Good. Replay. One line judge disagreed. The other line judge didn't see it. They're going to play it over. Here's the replay. It looked to me like it did skip. Replay. Replay. It looked like it did skip. Right off his racket. Three serves 13. Check the score. Three serves 12. And give him a point. 312. Javad Agalu. Side out. I don't know what Jason. <laughs> so who are you talking to, Jason? What, a normal shot, or he just set it up? Three. Maybe he feels he was lucky on that shot, because he just kind of sliced it inside. Side out. It's very important, even if Javad loses his first game, to get three some momentum, get some, something going for him. So if he goes into that second game, at least he can feel a little confidence. Yeah. Side out. Right now, no serve is working for him. Great get off the back wall. Outstanding. Outstanding pinch. Javad with the serve, trying to make a comeback. And uh, here's an opportunity for you to take a look at this one, Jim. Well, that was a great shot because he had Jason behind him on the left side. He pinched it so the ball Three went across to the right side. 12. Great gets. Or Look how close he is. and load, guys. Look at this. Look at this. I dare you to pass me. Oh! Unbelievable Fantastic round. Fantastic round. Look at it. Look at that. On the part of both men. And the final get by Jason Minnie. Boy, the pitchers will take care of themselves on this. Great get on that one. Full out dive. Just got that one. Got up in time. Dove again and rolled it out. That's, that's just fantastic athletic ability. Unbelievable. That would have been interesting because if Javad would have held up on that shot, I think he might have got the avoidable hinder. serves three. Well, at this level with these guys, you don't really need to hold Time out. Time out, 30 seconds. Outstanding, just outstanding. Appreciative crowd here at the Sports Mall. And that's where we are for the Junior Racquetball Championships in Salt Lake City. We'll take a break and be right back no with you. Well, after a, a most amazing rally that uh, was finished off by Jason Benino, a quick timeout. We're back with you. I'm Jim Turner with Jim Heiser in the first game. Jason with the serve and the lead. The score is 12 to 3 over Javad Agalu. And then it really had a great tournament up to this point. Eh? Beating the number one seed, taking a couple of those into the tiebreakers. He deserves to be here. But as they say in athletics, his lunch is being handed to him. Short. <laughs> Second well, serve. he, Lynn was speaking earlier about Jason plays very, very far up in the court. And all Side that out. Javad is trying to do is pinch the ball and kill the ball. He's not hitting any wide angle passes. Well, Lynn Adams is three. sitting right here in the, the rear part of the front court, or the uh, court. And Lynn, I'd like to ask you, is there anything that Javad could do in the next couple of points before uh, the obvious winner is gonna be named in the first game that he can learn to carry into the second game? At this point, I think what he needs to do, and yes, the answer is yes, he does have some things he can do, is kind of figure that you're going to lose this game and not worry so much about it. Uh -huh. But 
try to do as many different things as possible to see if there's a chink in Jason's armor. So that means you do weird stuff, like maybe you get a setup in the front court and you hit a ceiling ball just to see how Jason's moving from being real close up to deep. Um, doing some around the wall balls, throwing in some different serves, not some hard stuff, but some more junky stuff. Just something to maybe throw off Jason's timing a little bit so that he comes down in his skill level some. It really is almost as if he's feeding into the speed and quickness and the fact that Jason wants to get this game over with. Yeah, he, he's definitely playing to Jason's strengths right now, which is the front court stuff. His hands are so quick and his feet, I mean, he just comes off of his feet so instinctually, it's amazing. Well, it looks like a lot of uh, Javad's uh, teammates have left him because this entire gallery <laughs> was his yesterday as we look at potential first game point here for Jason Menino, 14-3. Short. Well, Jason's been switching Second the serve three. around very, very, very effectively. He went for the crack serve. He had Javad there, but he had the short forehand serve. Timeout. Now he's going timeout. This is one of those psychological timeouts that, you know, I got game point here. Watch it, Bubba. I'm going to come serve you an ace. want to congratulate everybody that's here. Thank them for being here and their support. Uh, of course, one of the gentlemen that is in attendance, as he should be, is the owner, Brent Cook of the Sports Mall, sitting in the back of the courts. I want to thank him for their hospitality and, and, and surrendering their club. Back down to Lynn Adams with a guest. Lynn? Well, I've got a friend of Jav. Javid's that um, that is helping him out. Jason, Javad, I'm sorry, that's helping him out. Um, Jason, you guys have been talking on the timeouts. What are you What are you telling him? I'm telling him to go down the line. Jason's every time he shoots it, he's playing front and he's waiting for Javad 14, to go either pinch it or go cross three. court. Every time Javad hit it down the line, Jason has to either die to get it or he doesn't get it. If you get it close to the wall, there's no way Jason will get it. Thanks very much. Up to you guys. Well, I don't know if there's no way. Uh, <laughs> Jason's showing every tendency of diving and playing through the air like a small Superman <laughs> and getting whatever he wants. Well, Jason's athletic ability really frustrated Javad in that game. Javad hit some really good shots, but Jason was just able to get everything. So all of a sudden, Javad said, hey, I'm going to go for bottom board, made a couple of errors. Well, I think Lynn made the good point. You know you're going to, you, you just accept the fact you're going to lose this first one. Try some things. Try to go reset yourself here at, uh, at the midpoint of, uh, of this match, although it could possibly go to three. Jason Menino, the number three seed, winning the first game here in the boys' 18 and under singles finals against Javad Agalu, who had a tremendous personal gallery here from Texas yesterday. He's the eighth seed. 15-3. There's a good look at uh, Javad getting some coaching. We need to take a short break. We'll be back with the second game here of the Boys 18 Championship game from Salt Lake City. I'm Jim Turner with Jim Heiser. And we're ready for the second match of the Boys 18 and under singles final. First game, Jason Menino winning rather easily 15-3 and Jim Heiser a good look at the stats. Well, Jason Menino, 20 kill shots. That's a large number of kill shots for any type of a game. That is his game, it, but that means he's on. He's not skipping the ball. He's making his shots. Hey, our ball girl who's done so much, our towel girl has done so much all uh, week long, Emily Daniels. She's the daughter of uh, our commissioner. Of course, that's my daughter. Look at her. Actor. She's getting a little uh, camera time. Thank She's got a couple of whistles there. Yeah. Way to go, Emily. <laughs> Of course, we've got to remember, we're at, the, <laughs> we're at the Juniors Tournament. Okay, we're ready for the second game. Jason Menino rather handily. Players ready. Folks, he's a performer. You have to understand, his confidence is, is beaming, and it's fantastic. Will be serving. He's good. Zero, sir, and when the zero. cameras go on, he's right at home. And here we go. And he's going to be tough to beat now because he's got his whole game is in sync right now. Well, we'll see if, uh, if Javad... Uh, decides that some of the suggestions that have been made to Side him out. by his friends and coaches are right. Does he go back to that lob serve, try to take Jason out of quickness, or what does he do? Well, he's not going back to the lob serve. He's going to go to the drive. Which, as you've uh, already established, feeds Jason's power. power Unless he can keep it off the back wall. If he can keep it off the back wall, then it'll be an effective One serve, but it's very zero. difficult to do that at this altitude. Hey, that point woke up some uh, fans for... Uh, for Javad, a bunch of young men down here, I'd say uh, age 14, 15 Zero, from sir, Texas. One. There's Jason, he's going to that lot, sir. That 
Well, his fans are standing up, yelling and screaming, so maybe this will give him a little momentum. One serve zero. Oh, that's a tough, tough cut. It's very difficult to do to turn around in that ball and reverse you know, it into that corner. I'll tell you, though, it's going to be frustrating. One. You serve over the backhand, he rolls it out. You serve over to a shot like that. He's back. His back is to the right wall, and he still splats it in there. Uh, it's got to be very frustrating. Hinder. Yeah, absolute good call. Good hold up on the part of uh, Menino. Zero serves one. You can see hold on, Jason hold on. hits the ball. Comes to Javad. He reverse pinches it, and there's no way Jason can yeah. see that come across in front of his body. Zero serves one. But I must say, as a referee, if he'd have taken a full shot at it and skipped it or whatever and then asked Ace. for a, a hinder, I would not have given it to him. No. A serve. Beautiful A serve down the forehand wall. He's going for that right hand crack, and he got it. One thing about Jason is Jason one does have one. a variety of things that he can do with the ball. He changes his serve a lot. He hits a lot of different shots. If he has to Second change, serve. he can change. Javad so far is not showing us that. Well, I think a lot of that is the fact that he's not been in the championship games. He probably, and this is an assumption on my part, hasn't had the opportunity to play the great players on a continuing basis Two, that Jason one. has. And that's, a, that's, that's really something if you can't play these guys all the time. Three serves one. 3-1. Jason with the serve and the lead. Well, if Jason gets one more point or two points, Javad has to call a timeout. Outstanding Side return. Out. Jason squeezing that ball, hoping there might have been a little crack in it. Well, Jason went for the crack. He had a good serve. All Javad could do is just push it. One he got a little bit of lucky three. on that one, actually. Uh, another tree's trying something else. Nice shot. Two serve and three. Jim, I got to ask you, Two since you're in charge three. of all of the networking across America on the, on the juniors racquetball, you're the one who takes them to Europe and, and everywhere around the world. And what a thrill that must be. If you look down the road from your past experience, and I'm talking about the Tim Sweeney's and the Chris Coles and the Andy Roberts, Jimmy Floyd's, those guys, where do you see the likes of Jason Menino and a Sudsy Monchick, uh, Alan Engel? Where do you see those kids putting them? I don't think there's any question at all that both Jason Menino and Sadzi Manchek at some time will be on the U.S. Four team. They'll be three. representing their country. They have tremendous talent. Mm -hmm. And they have more experience right now at the ages of 16 Side and out. 17 than Tim Sweeney had when he was 24. Three serves four. Of course, we had a, a good look uh, moments ago at Powerade, the drink, uh, brought to you a subsidiary of Coca-Cola Foods out. and talking about the Olympics seconds. that are coming up, and that's fantastic. And, the dream here with all the racquetball players, it's called the Olympic dream. Wanting to get this fantastic game into the Olympics and let the world know just how great it is. We've got a timeout on the court. Jason Menino with the lead over Javad Agalu. We'll take a, we won't take a short break. I'll just say that we're here watching the coaching. Uh, Sudzi Manchik talking to uh, Jason. And Jason's probably saying, don't talk to me. I know what I'm doing. That's how those two guys are. Javad staying on the court and... Even though he's hitting some pretty neat shot, he's Five probably seconds. saying, what am I doing here? The cameras are on. Jason is hot. Three, four. And I'm just not playing good enough to, to give it a game. Well, it's he's got really a, rough. He's got a good start here in the second game. You know, he's ahead by one point. Uh, Jason hasn't been able to blow him out with anything. Point. As soon as I say that, he skips an yeah. easy shot. Well, I just, four, you know, he's not four. the same guy he was yesterday when he won the semis. He's not the same player that he was the day before when he beat some other seeded players. And uh, great eight. serve. You established it quite well. That was a great serve. Another one down Five. the forehand wall. Serves but you four. established it when you get the kids in front of the camera for the first time. Unless it's a pattern. Like Short. Um, Second it, it really can take them out of their games. Well, Jason is really playing smart. I mean, he's changing his serves all the time. He's not letting Javad get into any kind of a rhythm. Yes! Right 
Well, I want to go down courtside again with Lynn Adams and, and ask her because she's got the wealth of experience. Six times a world champ. It would take a look at this again. Nice shot by Javad. And Four serves five. Lynn, what could you say if Javad were to come out of the court and ask you, hey, Side coach, out. what do I do? What would you say to him? Well, I think that he's got a, a good handle on things a little bit better Five right now. He's gone to that four. kind of junky half lob overhead Z serve, and it's giving Jason Short. some problems. Um, Basically, what he's doing is slowing Jason's power down. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Like I said, keeping keeping him deep. He should be doing a lot of passes. That's not a pass. <laughs> um, keeping Jason deep and position. making Jason force his shots because he likes to play fast Six. ball. Got a little discussion here. That was not a screen. I, I noticed that too. Jason is saying uh, <laughs> you can't give him a screen. Here it is because it was a screen on him. Now Ball he's comes asking off the for back a screen wall. on me. Yeah. Yeah. Javad thinks he didn't what didn't have a good view of the Six, ball, but sir, from our angle, it looks like he had a full view of the ball. I think it just came back at about 98 miles an hour, and he really wasn't quick enough to react, but. Uh, Again, I think sometimes in a championship ace. match, you, want to, you might want to give some of these kids the benefit of the doubt. That's the third ace out of the last six shots down the forehand side by Jason Benito. Seven, Seven serves serving four. four. Jason's changing his serve very, Short. very effectively. Javad's off balance. He doesn't know whether to go left, right, where the ball's going. Second serve. Well, I'll tell you something. It might look easy, uh, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, but Javad has certainly deserved being here in the finals. He has Skip. taken out the number one seed and dusted some other people Eight on the way to this four. championship game. Javad looks a little bit tight to me. It looks like he's at the point right now where he's going to start forcing a few. Side out. Jim, you took the kids to uh, to Amsterdam, was it? Mm -hmm. Now, where will the junior world team go this time? Where, where well, the first trip will be to the World Junior Championships in Jacksonville, Florida. Jacksonville, Florida. And they'll have Florida. one international trip. We don't know where that international trip Second will be, serve. but we'll take them in. And it'll be probably a teaching trip. Ball point. What a thrill it must be for some of these uh, 15, 16, 17 year old eight. kids to uh, <laughs> go overseas, if you will, and, and play racquetball. Boy. What amazed me, Jim, was the ability of these kids to interact with people from all over the country. One of our girls, I, Rusty Isenogo, who is uh, Alcova's sister, mm -hmm. uh, was our Japanese interpreter Side with out. the Japanese team. And she's going to Princeton next year. Rusty's going to Princeton. Alcova's going to Eight Stanford. Five. James is going to Stanford. Daddy, El uh, Daddy Isenogo must have some butt. <laughs> <laughs> Another forehand ace. Look at that. That's the fourth one. He has found his uh, alley today. He Look at this. Nine. Oh, five. There's nothing Javad can do with no, that. Can't do no, you can't do that. He's toying with him. Yep. Almost, well, almost looks like one of the matches that we've seen a lot with Michelle Gilman when she's in the ladies' finals. Kind of toying with him. Well, you know, Javad doesn't look like he's playing very well, but you got to give Jason That's some right. credit. That's absolutely right. 10 5 is the score. We're in the second game. He can uh, wrap it up rather quickly with the, the uh, juniors' championship game. serve. Jason Menino with four ace serves. All of them down the forehand side. Almost got one right there. Jim, would you call that an ace? I'd call that an you ace. You get your racket on it. I'm not yeah. sure. I don't even know if he got his racket after, before mm -hmm. it bounced twice. Well, if we have a friendly uh, statistician, they might give him Second his fifth serve. ace. I don't know. You get your racket. I don't know. He's playing very it was well a good is what serve. we're trying to say. Skip ball. He skipped up. Yeah. I don't know. Hey, why not appeal it? He's, he's appealing. He's appealing. Ball stands. That's a charge to appeal. <laughs> Jason gave the, the evil eye to Five, Brett Parker, the line judge on that one. <laughs> no, no. Two bounce. Two bounce. Good call, Tom Neal. Two bounce. Side out. It was uncanny how Jason 11, knew exactly where Javon was going to shoot that ball. World Championships coming up. Jim up in Montreal. Skip ball. We see some of the juniors up there participating. 
Uh, well, we see some of the, our juniors from last year. Uh, mm -hmm. Eric Mueller, Five, who won, uh, who was 11. fourth, I think, last year in the junior nationals and, and won our adult doubles. He'll be there representing the, the U.S. team. And, but as far as the other juniors, uh, they're not able to qualify for that particular event yet. Well, I'll tell you something. If you don't know Jason's way, that was almost a perfect 11, ace in its own right serve five. by Javad, and Jason just walks up and nonchalantly rolls it out for a side out. He's completely re relaxed, sir. Why not? And he's just rolling the ball. He's saying, how come I can't play this way all the time? No pressure. He has no pressure on him right now. Everything's going well. Twelve serves five. Outstanding wraparound. Did he get that? I don't think Look, he got it. I didn't think he got it either. I really didn't. I thought that way. I agree. I think Javad should appeal, and he Jason's is. Lynn Adams There's is right down appeal. there. Call stands. Call stands. Yeah. Lynn, what did you think on that shot? No. Lynn thought she, you had. You thought he had the shot, Lynn. Oh yeah. Well, you're right there at floor level, so you certainly can see it a lot better than we are. We're just up a little bit with, with the cameras, but I, I still agree that Javad should have appealed that. And he did, and both line judges agreed with the referee. Short. Of course, you just had an eye operation, and I can't Second see very well, so. <laughs> Look at that shot. That's good. I mean, that's a hard, he was turning all the way around, 360 degrees off the back roll, and he flat rolled it out. 14 serves five. Possible match point serving five. And as we set the storyline about 45 minutes ago, Jason's predicted, and it looks like it's coming true that exactly this would happen. He would dust him and finish it quick, and he's done just that. Hey, our congratulations to Jason Menino. The junior men's winner. Congratulations to Javad Agalu. First time on the scene before our cameras with us. A nice, seated. nice young man who's had a heck of a of a tournament. You saw the picture there, part of the crowd, the man with the USA on the back Please of his shirt. Seated. That is Keith Calkins, the president here uh, on the board of the directors, Keith too. Calkins, with the AARA, what a neat man he is, as we see. Jason Menino being congratulated. His doubles partner, Sudzi Monchik, right behind him. Watch this rollout here on the final match point well, for Jason Menino. It was a, great, a fitting this. way to win because he's been killing the ball great all day. Here it is. Everything into it, flat roll up. And the championship for Jason Menino. That's a good look at that. We're going to be back with that man, the winner, Jason Menino, after he wins 15-3, 15-5 in Salt Lake City. Welcome back, and I'm down here with Jason Menino, 1992 Junior Olympic Champion. And Jason, prior to that match, you made a prediction to Jim Turner that pack your bags, this is going to be over with in a hurry. Was it as easy as it looked? No, it wasn't as easy as it looked, but I felt that since I beat Allen, uh, that I was unstoppable and that I'd make it a quick one. Well, you look very at ease out there. It didn't seem there was any pressure. Was there any pressure? There was a lot of pressure. I just tried to stay as calm as possible and play my game to make it as easy as possible. Well, congratulations, and we hope to see you in the new U.S. Junior Team. And back to you, Jim. Well, thank you, Jim Heiser, and our congratulations to Jason Menino. There it is on your screen in front of you, a three-peat for Elkova Isanova, three in a row for her. And again, congratulations to Jason Menino. So for our producer, Lee Felsmo, our director, Big Mike Diamond from Denver, and all the great crew, Luke St. Owens, the executive director of the AARA. Of course, not forgetting the parents and the players, Make sure to watch for the next listing of Prime Network's exclusive coverage of racquetball in September with the World Championships from Montreal in Canada. So for Lynn Adams and Jim Heiser, I'm Jim Turner, thanking all of you.